Welcome to On the Prowl. I'm your host, Hunter Garrick, and with me today is a coach of the s Train Wildcats, Coach Stephen Robichaud. Thanks for joining us, Coach. Thanks, Hunter. Appreciate it. Coming up on today's show, Coach Robichaud will break down last week's game against the Central Lafouche Trojans, and we'll get the coach to preview this week's game against the HL Bourgeois Braves. And finally, we'll take a look back to last week's Battle on the River volleyball game. How are you feeling about being the only undefeated team in District 75A? We're really excited. You know, it's, uh, it's, you know, whenever you go out and play, you want to win a game, obviously, and our goals are to win every game. And, uh, you know, our, our kids are playing well. They, they're doing a good job. They've won some tough games. They've won some not so tough games. But uh, uh, Friday night, they played real well. They went on the road and played a real good Central Lafouche team that, uh, and, really, and really played well. So excited that we're playing well at this part of the season and just hope we can continue for another couple of weeks. What can you say about Christian Mosley's 61-yard touchdown run on the second play of the game? Well, it's always big to get out to a fast start and, and get that momentum going. And for him to go 61 yards uh, was, was a combination of a number of things. That means your offensive line is doing a good job. Your offensive coordinator did a great job calling the plays. And, and the receivers are blocking well downfield. So we're excited that he, that he was able to do that. Uh, he, that's a good way to start. It kind of gives your kids some momentum to build on. And I think that was a big factor in the, the victory on Friday night. Majority of the passing plays were in the 60-yard range. What does this say about Destran's big play potential? Well, you know, we're very blessed to have great athletes at, uh, at Destrahan, uh, obviously with guys like uh, Justin Jefferson and, uh, you know, Mike Young and, and, and all those guys do a tremendous job, Quentin Tobar. And uh, it, it, Harold Blood has done a great job of getting them the football. And, you know, for you to be able to throw the ball downfield and, and stretch the uh, defense is key, and, and we were able to do that. And what that does for you, it opens up the running game. So. Uh, for, so we can continue to complete the long balls. It's definitely going to help us out because we'll better run the football, and I think that's key to being successful. Let's take a look at the first half highlights. Here's that second play. Does a good job. Cutting it back. Gets past the safety. Does a tremendous job running the football. Great catch, that sophomore to sophomore. Hopefully they've got a lot of balls and catches coming to those guys in the next couple of years, Harold Blood and Quentin uh, and Tobert. John Emery running hard, that's another sophomore doing a tremendous job for us. JR loses the rush here, gets the ball out to Justin with a, with a great run after the catch, you know, getting into the end zone. Play well on defense. Kendrick Johnson coming up, making a big play on a uh, tunnel screen. Here's Tariq Rogers doing a good job with Jay Stroud. Very special night for number 17, Terrell Burnett. I, I can't remember in the years that I've been coaching where an athlete ended up uh, intercepting three passes, and he did that Friday night. So what a, a great accomplishment. Mike Young, who's a Notre Dame commit, tremendous job running with the ball after the catch. He can really explosive, can make things happen. Come on a blitz right here. Another one of Terrell's his second interception tonight. Does a great job getting to the football. JR throws a screen here to John Emery. Great blocking downfield. He takes a distance for a touchdown. Unbelievable interception by a defensive lineman right here. Chopin does a good job knocking the ball away from the receiver and uh, does a great job right here. Bryce Sienna with a great interception for a D lineman. Bring making Clark on a blitz, comes open, does a tremendous job getting the quarterback down. Here's Vanette again, his third interception of the half. And you can see Central Foods was driving the ball a little bit on us, and uh, we were able to stop him at the goal line, and that's a key for us. How do you feel about John Emery rushing 128 yards, only being a sophomore? He's going to be a special player for us. He, he, he does a tremendous job. He's a humble kid. He works extremely hard. He's got all the tools. His dad played college ball and, and played a little bit in the NFL. He, he's got what it takes. Uh, you know, the sky's the limit for him. 
Uh, he, he works. He does a good job of, of, of paying attention to what he needs to do. He, he's a he's a true back. He's, he's six foot, you know, 180, 190 pounds, and he just does a tremendous job running hard, and he's got great vision. So I, I think the sky's the limit for John. The hustle of your team in the first half was incredible. What techniques did you notice by your players? Well, you know, the big thing for us was to, to come out and play well and put it all together for, for four quarters, and I thought we did that. You know, when it kind of helps when you get the momentum and you, and you ride that momentum throughout the game. And, and probably the most important thing is we got a lot of young guys to be able to play in the third and fourth quarter, so that was a, a great experience that they end up getting on uh, Friday night. But, uh, you know, it, it's fun when you go down there, when you're clicking on offense, defense, special teams, and it's a lot of fun, and, and kids enjoy themselves Friday night. Coach, your team was up by 35 points going into halftime. What was going through your mind at that time? Well, the one thing you want to do is to continue to play well. You know, you always like to keep your starters in through the first or second the series into the four, uh, second half, and, uh, and we were able to do that. You know, you want to get those guys out and, uh, and you know, don't risk injury. And, and we got down there, scored, Central scored, made it 42-7, uh, to seven, and then we kind of emptied the bench. But, uh, you know, main thing is to come out of halftime, continue doing the things you did in the first half, Complete that, uh, complete that little first couple of drives, and then get out of there and let the rest of the young kids play. And that we were able to do that. How do you think the younger guys played last Friday? Well, you know, I, I was impressed with them. You know, uh, Central uh, kept their ones in for, for a pretty good period of time, and uh, you know they competed. You know, we had uh, one touchdown, and then we had another one come back. Now Central did score two more touchdowns against all younger kids that you don't like, but uh, but they they did a good job. Uh, but uh, you know, we had one touchdown. Uh, and then uh, you know, another long touchdown call back. But, uh, but I thought our kids competed, and that's all you can ask, and I thought they played well. Let's take a look at the second half highlights. Still have the one. TC does to Terrell Chopin does a good job knocking the ball down. That's Emory just running through people. Christian does a good job following this block and just runs hard, gets the ball all the way down inside the 10, and he finishes the drive. Great job blocking up front. Brandon Hoob, Chase Camino, Jacob Rouser. We've got a lot of young guys in right here, trying to keep them out of the end zone. Some ones in here. We'll put it for the hands team for the. Uh, is a guy we think is going to be real good. Also, another sophomore, real fast, Mark Trahan. What a great run by a sophomore. Great job by Aaron Buckwalter, Scott Perrett. Young guys doing Donald Briscoe doing a good job here, finishing up the game. How proud of, are you of your defense? They came away with four interceptions, three of them coming in the first half. You, you know, you, whenever you can win the takeaway uh, turnover battle, it's, it's really key for you, and, and that's one of our goals when we're going into games. And, uh, you know, we were able to do that this week, uh, obviously, because of the number of terminals we have. But uh, we preach it all the time. Coach Scott does a great job of working it. Uh, Coach Boyne does a great job working with the offense by trying not to, uh, to avoid turnover. So that's a key that's, that's been talked about a lot, uh, NFL, college, anywhere that the football is being played, that the turnover ratio is, is key. And, and I thought you know, uh, being on that positive side really helped us Friday night. How great is it to see your backup QB throw for 237 yards and two touchdowns? I tell you, I can't say enough good things about Jr. He, he's come in, but it, it's a testament to what he's done and what uh, Coach Boyne's done and the kids around him have done. But, uh, you know, he, he's the kind of guy that, that continued, even though he wasn't playing, he was a backup of Cohen. He came out every day and worked hard and, and learned the offense. And so when we did insert him there in the Hornbill game, he knew what was going on and he knew what he needed to do. And, and he's going to be a phenomenal player for us. He, he, you can see he's already had a lot of success, and, and hopefully he'll continue to get better. What are your feelings on your team rolling more than 500 yards of total offense? Well, you know, that, that was big for us. You know, uh, uh, when you can run the ball and throw it, and we both, both facets of the offense were, were really working. And, uh, 
And, uh, you know, that comes with a lot of hard work, guys doing their job to be successful. And, and, and I think that if we can continue to play well like that on offense, hopefully we can stop the people on defense and, uh, and we can uh, win a few games here toward the end of the season. Thanks, Coach. Coming up, we'll get Coach to look ahead at this week's game against the HL Bourgeois Breeze. And we'll hear from the Destran Volleyball team for their first battle on the River matchup. We'll be right back. Welcome back to On the Prowl. I'm your host, Hunter Garrick. Before we get coached to look ahead at this week's game against the HL Bourgeois Braves, the Hondel and Destrian volleyball team has met on the court for the first time this year, last Thursday. We'll go to Austin Verde with the story. The Destrian Lady Cats met their parish rival on the court for the first time this year, and even though they didn't come away with the win, they felt they played with a lot of energy. Destrahan with a big old block. Um, I felt like we really worked as a team and we hustled more than we ever have. And I think we really wanted it to win tonight, even though we didn't. But I'm proud of the way we played. I think it definitely motivates us to do better in future games and play harder versus other teams. Our team strength tonight was probably hustle. Hustle. We came in uh, after a district win last night, knowing that we had to keep the energy up. And I think. Uh, being a young team, that's the hardest thing is to make sure after every night that you can come back with the same energy. And I thought, I thought, I thought the amount of energy we showed was 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 fantastic. She is the rain for Destran with the kill on the one. The Lady Cats play with a lot of energy and emotion, but they are a young team that has a bright future. We're really young, but I feel like we work together. You know, there's not anyone who really stands out, so that helps bring us all together. And I think we communicate well, and we're all striving for that one goal to win. This is the groundwork. I feel like this is, uh, we've got a nucleus of sophomores, six sophomores. We have more freshmen on our varsity than we have seniors. So the, uh, the future is super bright, very bright for us. And uh, I think this is just a foundation, and uh, you know that's what we're here for—to change the culture and to and to build a program. Spike and she gets the kill off the block. The Lady Cats meet up again with their Cross River rivals next Tuesday in a second battle on the River matchup. Reporting for On the Prowl, I'm Austin Verde. Coach, these seniors have never lost a regular season game on the field and have only lost to two teams. How special is this group of seniors to you as they play their last home regular season game? All the seniors that ever come to Destran are very important. Uh, you know, we have a, a very solid program that, that our seniors buy into all the time. And uh, just a special group of kids that, that come up and work hard every day. And, uh, you know, it's really fun to be around these guys. And, uh, and you know, it, it's special. Uh, uh, they, they do a great job. They prepare well. They go out and they play hard. And that's all you can ask. So it's really a special group. Are there any concerns you have going against HL Bourgeois this Friday? Well, you know, it's, it's, we do have distractions with senior night, obviously, and, and that's always a concern for coaches. But, uh, you know, uh, hopefully our kids have been doing a great job all year overcoming a little bit of adversity. So uh, I think we'll be fine, and hopefully we continue to, to, to play well. What are your overall goals for this Friday? Well, you know, the, our big thing is to, to come out and establish the run. Uh, we have to stop the run against them. Their quarterback, uh, LeCompte, does a tremendous job running the football. And, and the key to victory this year, this, I'm sorry, this week, is to be able to stop him and to be able to run the ball. And, and that's what we're going to focus on this week. Always a pleasure talking to you, Coach. Thank you, I huh? Appreciate you. 
And that will do it for this edition of On the Prowl. For updates on Press Play Productions, make sure to check out our website at PressToPlay.tv. I'm your host, Hunter Garrick. Thanks for watching.